Hey everyone, Nicole from Video Maker, and I want to talk to you about Cinema Studies and how it can be used to better your productions. Today we're going to talk about the differences between diegetic and non-diegetic elements. Now diegetic is a term that you usually hear used in reference to sound elements, but it can also be used to describe visual elements such as graphics. Diegetic means anything within the story, this diegesis, that's the world of the story. So that's anything within the narrative world that the character can interact with, that the character recognizes and understands as part of their world. Non-diegetic is anything outside the story, like still within the film, still part of the film, but not inside the world of the story. To get a better idea of how this concept works and where these definitions might get a little blurry, let's look at a couple examples. Every weekday, for 12 years, Harold would brush each of his 32 teeth 76 times. 38 times back and forth, 38 times up and down. So Stranger Than Fiction starts off in a pretty typical way. We see um, your usual background music, which is a non-diegetic element. We have narration, which is non-diegetic at this point, but we'll talk about that more. And uh, we have these graphics, which are sort of ambiguous. They would traditionally be considered non-diegetic, but because they are perhaps an externalization of Harold Crick's own thoughts, we might consider them a diegetic element. But again, ambiguous there. We've got cool stylization happening, but for the most part, the film is following convention. Until this moment. If one had asked Harold, he would have said that this particular Wednesday was exactly like all the Wednesdays prior. And he began it the same way he... And he began it the same way he always did. Hello? In this moment, Harold begins to hear the narrator, transitioning that narrator's voice from being a non-diegetic external element to the story to a diegetic element that is within the story and affecting Harold's actions. This opens up a lot of space for exploration on storytelling modes and how we actually perceive the conventions of storytelling and, and why those particular conventions work. The story becomes not just about two people falling in love, but about all stories and how we tell them. Harold just counted brush strokes. Sometimes breaking convention can have a seriously comedic effect. It's like telling a meta-cinematic joke. Blazing Saddles is a great example of this. We first perceive the music as non-diegetic, maybe incongruous with the genre, but definitely following traditional narrative conventions. This is a non-traditional sheriff. I mean, obviously race plays a big role in this film, but still the music is perceived as non-diegetic because that's the convention. Until this moment. Suddenly Count Basie and his orchestra, his big band, become part of the film world itself, subverting convention and drawing even more attention to the incongruity of uh, this music in the film, in the genre of the Western, producing a comedic effect. This happens a lot in comedy. You think the music is outside the narrative, but a character surprises us by interacting with it. Yep, I found him for you, Truman. That's why I came by tonight. Sure, he's got quite a story to tell. The effects can also be more serious, however. So in this scene from The Truman Show, we can kind of see where diegetic versus non-diegetic elements become a little bit more complicated. Easy on the fog. Stand by Crane Cam. Crane Cam. Truman himself is not hearing any of the background music, not hearing any of the direction from the uh, kind of observation deck, but we are, so therefore it's still a diegetic element. We see that in the scene, we're commenting on the manipulation of emotions inherent in media production. Notice that what is diegetic to us is non-diegetic to the in-story viewers. Let's go. Walk. Where are we going? Get you some coffee. Did I do something to disrespect you? Not yet. 
Birdman slights these conventions in an even more subtle way. Now Birdman has this great drum bass soundtrack that kind of pulses throughout the film, but in this scene, it suddenly shifts from a non-diegetic element into the world of the story becoming a diegetic element. Popular? Popularity is the slutty little cousin of prestige, my friend. Regan is walking by and actually tosses a coin into the cup of the drummer who has been producing this soundtrack throughout. As Regan passes by the drummer and tosses a coin into his cup, he brings the audience's attention to the rhythm that has been in his background and thus our background throughout the film. This emphasizes the dreamlike quality of the film and reinforces the influence that Regan's perspective has over it. So that's where we get all of these weird moments where Riggin is flying or he has control over his environment that normally wouldn't be allowed. Oh, so that, is that what tonight was about? You wrestling with complex emotions? Tonight was just about seeing if it's even alive, seeing if it can leave. No, this isn't the backlot, Riggin. This is New York City. This is how we do things. Where are you going? They have coffee here. With an awareness of the interplay between diegetic and non-diegetic elements, we can choose to keep to convention in order to increase dramatic immersion, direct audience attention, or manipulate emotional response, or we can break convention for comedic effect in order to draw attention to the medium itself or to shock your audience into a new understanding of the film. I can't wait to see how you use this knowledge on your next production. Until next time, I'm Nicole Lajeunesse with Videomaker. Thanks for watching.